Van Tam uh, to brief us on the latest data nationally and in Greater Manchester. Thank you, uh, Jonathan. Thank you, Prime Minister. First slide, please. So um, I'm beginning today's data briefing with a slide which I showed on the 12th of October, and I'm doing that on purpose. Um, first of all, to remind you that there are two maps of England here. Um, the one on the left in purple shows the weekly case rates per 100,000, and the one on the right in brown shows the rate of change uh, per 100,000 population, all by local authority area level. And the darker colours indicate higher rates of disease or higher rates of change. And you'll see that these um, geographic maps are current uh, for the week 30th of September to the 6th of October. And if you quickly look at those shadings, we'll now turn to the second slide, which is the 8th of October to the 14th of October. And you can clearly see that that dark purple confluent um, problem area has extended from coast to coast now and extends quite a long way down the country. In contrast, the rate of change is more variable and there are more patches of green indicating a negative rate of change as much as there are new patches of dark brown, such as in Lincolnshire. Next slide, please. And there's a similar picture for those aged 60 and above. Again, these are the old geographic maps that I showed you um, eight days ago. And changing to the new graph now, you can see that the purple areas have increased and there are some new areas of um, increased rate of change uh, in the over 60s. And I really want to emphasize that it is the over 60s that really worries us most because these are the people who become severely ill with COVID-19. They are more likely to be admitted to hospital. If they are admitted to hospital, they stay in hospital for longer and sadly, they are more difficult to save. Next slide, please. So <clears throat> here are the data broken down by age band and by English region, beginning with the Northeast, the Northwest, Yorkshire and Humber. And really, each of these um, subplots is um, a contrasting game of two halves, in as much that the 10 to 19 and 20 to 29 age group, you can see that the weekly case rate um, has declined on all of those traces. Now, this may be partly ascertainment. It may relate to the rate at which people are coming forwards for testing, which is now flat, because the rate of swab positivity continues to increase. But the other half of the coin, if you like, are the older age groups, from uh, 30 to 39 through to 80 plus. And here you can see over time this continuing increase in case rates. And this really shows us now that um, the infections which have seeded in the younger age groups are now penetrating those older age groups as we go forwards in time. And these are cases. This means that the hospital admissions and the deaths, sadly, that are linked to those cases are now baked in for the next two to three weeks. Next slide, please. Um, these are the same graphs again, but this time for the East Midlands, for London and the West Midlands. You can again, again see, particularly in the East Midlands and related to uh, Nottingham particularly, that drop in the 10 to 19s and 20 to 29s but the continuing increase in case rates in the other ages. Next slide, please. And the same is true of East of England, South East and South West, but at much, much lower overall levels of disease than we are currently seeing in the North of England. Next slide, please. Now again, I'm referring back to the heat maps that I showed you on the 12th of October, showing that gradual warming up of um, disease rates in the 16 to 29s that then creeps through into the older age groups with a few weeks lag as we move through the age bands as we go up each of the blocks. That's the, the visual snapshot from the 12th of October. I'll now move to the 
new snapshot. And I think it's pretty stark. I think you can see very clearly now from these data that are just um, a week on how those heat maps have increased very markedly, not just in the northeast, not just in the northwest, but also in the East Midlands, top left, and in Yorkshire and Humber, bottom right. This is most concerning because it's the penetration of disease into the older age groups that gives the NHS significant problems. Next slide, please. And indeed, here are the weekly COVID-19 hospital admission rates in England by age group. And you can see very, very marked and very steep increases for 85 plus, 75 to 84, and 65 to 74. And some of you, um, the eagle-eyed amongst you, will say, well, these data extend up until the 11th of October. Um, I will show you some data that go further than that, though they are not segregated by age, but the pattern is the same. Next slide, please. Before I do so, these are the um, ICU and HDU admission rates. You can see that same very sharp rise in 75 to 84s, 65 to 74s, and 55, 45 to 64s, but um, less so in aged 85 plus, consistent with the fact that fewer patients in that age group are appropriate clinical candidates for intensive care. Next slide, please. And I did say I would bring those data from the 11th of October right up to date for you. So um, these are up to the 17th of October, and they show daily COVID-19 patients admitted by um, English region. You can see that the burden at the moment is in the northwest, northeast, and Yorkshire, but with an increasing burden in the Midlands. And the little red arrows that are on each of the x-axes show you where the level was one week ago, which shows you, once this gets started in an area, how quickly it then builds. Next slide, please. These are um, total numbers of patients in hospital with COVID-19, as opposed to new admissions. But again, you can see um, that that trend of increasing burden in the NHS continues uh, with some dramatic increases in the last week. Next slide, please. And um, Prime Minister has asked me to focus a little on Greater Manchester. These are the heat maps for Greater Manchester, up to date on the October the 15th, and the data um, extending from early September through to that date. And you can see across um, the sub-regions of Greater Manchester, there are really very significant um, areas of heat across pretty much all of the ages and really extending to some deep purple zones in the older age groups. Next slide, please. This is the rate of new COVID hospital patients in England by NHS region. Um, you can see that the north is running ahead of the rest of the country at the moment. Next slide, please. Drilling down a little bit um, into the northwest, you can see Cheshire, Greater Manchester, and Lancashire as um, STP partnership areas, and all of those increases in the number of patients being hospitalised with COVID-19 now. Next slide, please. Thank you, Prime Minister. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, JVT. And the presentation that you've just seen uh, shows clearly uh, why we must act. And as we act, uh, I don't want anybody to think that your actions, our actions are in vain or the efforts in vain because our collective action across the country has brought the R number well below its natural rate of about three. As a result, the virus is not spreading as quickly as it did in February and March. However, while the R is below its natural level, it does remain above one, meaning that the virus continues to spread. So, we need to take action to reduce the R, control the virus, especially in those parts of the, of the country, uh, as you've just seen, where the virus is most prevalent. And this evening, uh, informed by the data that we've just seen, I can announce that Greater Manchester will move to the very high alert level. That means that 
pubs and bars must close unless they're serving substantial meals. Households can't mix indoors or in most outdoor settings. In some public outdoor spaces, groups must be limited to the rule of six. And we strongly advise against travel into and out of the area. In line with the additional measures taken in Lancashire, casinos, bingo halls, betting shops, adult gaming centres and soft play areas must also close. Regulations will be laid in Parliament on Thursday and come into force uh, just after midnight. I know that these restrictions are tough, both on businesses and individuals, and believe me, no one wants to uh, be putting these things uh, into effect. But that's why we're also uh, enacting a comprehensive package of support. Uh, the job support scheme ensures those affected by business closures uh, are still paid. Those affected by business closures are still paid. And once you top that up with universal credit, those on low incomes will receive at least 80% of their normal income. We've made available up to £465 million to help local authorities implement and enforce restrictions. Greater Manchester will receive £22 million of this, uh, and that's on top of the extra £1 billion uh, we're providing in funding for local authorities across the whole country. We will work with local authorities, uh, including Greater Manchester, to allocate testing and introduce local contact tracing. Over the last 10 days, we tried to get an, uh, an approach with local leaders in Greater Manchester, uh, a joint approach. Unfortunately, agreement wasn't reached, and I do regret this. As I said last week, it would have been better and uh, we would have a better chance of defeating the virus if we work together. Uh, in addition, I'm, I must say, to the uh, support outlined above, we made a generous and extensive offer to support Manchester's business. I want to stress, this offer was proportionate to the support we've given Merseyside and Lancashire. The Mayor didn't accept this, unfortunately, uh, and given the public health situation, I must now proceed with moving Greater Manchester, as I say, to the very high alert level. Because not to act would put Manchester's NHS and the lives of many of Manchester's residents at risk. Uh, despite the failure to reach an agreement, I hope the Mayor and Council leaders in Greater Manchester will now work with us to implement these measures. Elsewhere, discussions on moving to the very high alert level continue with local leaders in South Yorkshire, West Yorkshire, Nottinghamshire and the North East. I hope and expect central and local government will continue to work closely together as we're seeing in Merseyside, in, in London, in Lancashire and in many other parts of the country. Because ultimately, all of us want to protect the NHS and in doing so, to save lives. Thank you. I'm now going to go to questions from the public. Can we have our, our first question, please? How many places under Tier 3 restrictions would be needed before implementing a national lockdown? Well, I think what we're trying to avoid is a, uh, a national lockdown uh, at all. And uh, that's, uh, Jake, sorry, that's Jake from, uh, from Chester on the, on, the, on the video. We don't rule anything out, Jake, uh, but the, the difficulty is that the, the distribution of the virus this time round is very uneven by comparison with uh, with March and, and April. And so the right response, as many other countries are, are doing, is to go for this local and, and regional approach. That's what, we're, that's what we're going for. Let's go next to Vicky from, from Lancashire. Vicky from Lancashire asks, my, mother, uh, my grandmother has dementia, lives in a care home, and has been in and out of hospital over recent months. Due to restrictions on visiting and local lockdowns, I've only been allowed to visit her once since March. Is there an opportunity for the restrictions on visiting care homes to be reviewed, which may enable an individual to visit their loved ones? Well, I'm going I'm to ask uh, JVT, J uh, Jonathan Van Tam, to comment on that in a, in a second. But I just want to say, Vicky, that you know, everybody sympathises deeply uh, with, uh, with you and, and your family, and this is a, a situation that tragically is being replicated up and down the country. 
We do have to prevent the spread of the virus in care homes. You remember what happened in, uh, in the early part of the, of the year, so we have had to take some steps uh, to uh, protect elderly residents from the possibility of infection uh, by visitors. Uh, but we are certainly looking at what we can do to review uh, the circumstances uh, that might allow people to visit their elderly uh, relatives in, in, in extreme circumstances and on compassionate grounds because you know this it is a I can see how, how absolutely wretched it is and I think many many people across the country have, have now had experience of this of this problem. Uh, JVT do you want to add anything? Yeah thank you Prime Minister. I mean this is really extremely distressing and I know it's extremely distressing for relatives and for people who live in care homes. But the unfortunate and horrible truth about this virus is that when it gets into care homes, it can inflict really massive mortality very quickly. And the staff that go into care homes are being regularly tested. We can't get them to live in the care home as well. So they are in contact with the community. And there is this constant tension between wanting to see relatives and not wanting to witness catastrophic mortality in these care homes. I am hoping that some of the pilots with um, rapid and novel testing methods will eventually lead to a breakthrough so that we can be more relaxed about uh, visiting uh, residents and, and, and our families in care homes in a much safer way. But for now, it is, I acknowledge openly, a very difficult situation indeed. And, uh, and thanks for mentioning that point, JBT, about the, the new types of, um, of testing systems that we were hoping to, to bring in. Uh, and as I said in, in the uh, press conference on Friday, we will be prioritising uh, care homes uh, for those tests because it is a, a truly uh, a tragic and very, very difficult situation for, for many people. Uh, let's go to Vicky Young of the BBC, please. Vicky. Prime Minister, in the last few hours, thousands and thousands of businesses in Greater Manchester have been told that they are going to have to close very soon. You've talked about £22 million of help for the Greater Manchester area. Can you now clear up, because many of your own MPs in the area do not know, what are you offering to the area beyond that? Are you withdrawing the extra, what you called generous offer? Is that now off the table? And what do you say to the mayor of Greater Manchester, who has accused you of grinding down communities through these negotiations? And then to Professor Van Tam, if I could, uh, Northern Ireland and Wales have both now announced what they're calling a, a fire break a short period of severe restrictions. Do you think that now should be the approach for England as well? Uh, well, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Vicky. Uh, look, I, I bitterly uh, regret uh, any uh, restrictions that lead to damage to uh, businesses and to people's lives. Of course I do. And no, nobody wants to uh, be uh, putting people in Greater Manchester or, or, or anywhere through these uh, through the, the experience that they've, they've been through. And, and, and frankly, Andy uh, Burnham is, is right in what he says about the, the length of, of the uh, endurance that uh, Greater Manchester has, has shown. And, the, and, the, and uh, I've, I've simply got to, to look at the, at the, the data, the, uh, the uh, alas, the number of deaths, the hospital uh, admissions, and, and, and we have to act. And of course, the, the package that uh, I described, the 22 million uh, of, uh, uh, that I, I described, that's additional to other support. Um, you know, we're, we're always happy to uh, continue to uh, consider that. But then uh, don't forget, Vicky, that this is a, a government that has uh, put uh, 190 billion pounds uh, already in uh, supporting uh, businesses and jobs, uh, livelihoods across the, across the country. Uh, we are uh, investing uh, huge sums to uh, support local authorities and another a billion pounds uh, as I said and Greater Manchester will have access to uh, all kinds of funds particularly to help with uh, testing uh, and and tracing uh, and uh, and and of course uh, with enforcement so um, the funds are there uh, they're they're massive uh, and um, what we couldn't do 
uh, I hope people understand, was do a deal with Greater Manchester that really would have been uh, out of kilter with the, uh, the agreements we'd already reached with, with Merseyside and, and with Lancashire. Uh, that was the, that was the, the, the problem. Um, uh, but, uh, it, you know, it's, I'm very, very grateful to, uh, to Andy and to uh, his teams for uh, going ahead now as they have said they will and implementing uh, these measures. And uh, the most important thing now is that people comply and that we get a high level of compliance in uh, Greater Manchester and in uh, all the areas that are uh, currently in the upper tiers, because that's the way uh, to drive the R down, Vicky. So I'll continue and answer my question. Thank you for it. Um, and it, the answer's kind of in four parts. Um, first of all, I hope my uh, opening slides were very clear that pretty much everywhere in England is now heating up to some extent. And we are trying to walk a very fine line between getting the virus under control in areas where it is out of control and um, incurring the minimum amount of economic damage in doing so. And it is clear that in the areas where it is out of control, and I focused on those in um, the presentation, hard measures are needed. But do I think right now it is appropriate to insist on those similar hard measures in, for example, the southwest of England or Kent, where um, levels of disease are really very, very much lower than in the north of England. In other words, the national fire break you talk about. No, I don't think that's right, and I don't think that's consistent with the epidemiological picture we're seeing, or indeed consistent with the pressures that are being um, seen in different parts of the health service across the country, which again are very different. And maybe Professor Powis might comment on that point. Yes, th thank you, JVT. So, so as JVT has shown with the epidemiology, there is variation among, uh, around the country. And indeed, that is also reflected in the number of patients that we see in hospitals. So if I give you an example of that, there are more patients in hospitals in Greater Manchester alone at the moment than there are in hospitals in the entire southeast and southwest of the country. So we are seeing uh, variability in infection rates. Those infection rates inevitably lead to, unfortunately, more deaths. They lead to more hospital admissions and more people in hospitals. They actually lead to more long-term symptoms because we now also know uh, that COVID can affect you beyond the initial acute illness in what's becoming known as long COVID. And that's a, a condition that affects all ages. So it's not just uh, the elderly, uh, but it is variable throughout the country. So the key to this, as the Prime Minister and Jonathan has said, is to reduce infection rates. Uh, and that requires measures to be put in place that will do that, but also crucially for people to comply with those measures. The British public did that in April and May, and we saw what happened. R came below one, uh, and death rates and hospital rates began to fall. So we know these measures work, and, and really we can all play a part here. It's for everybody in, in the public to comply with the measures, to reduce the spread of the virus, and that will then reduce hospital admissions. It will benefit, obviously, people with COVID, but it will also benefit other patients who don't have COVID, because the last thing we want to do is to eat into the capacity that we have in hospitals that we use to treat other conditions. Thank you very much, uh, Stephen. Thank you, thank you, Vicky. Let's uh, go to Carl Dinan of ITV. Thank you, Prime Minister. Uh, will businesses in Manchester, like the pub where I'm sitting now, have to close without any of the extra support that you were talking to Andy Burnham about earlier today? And is Manchester being made an example of? And if I could ask Jonathan Van Tam as well, two quick questions. Uh, are these tier three measures with the added restrictions that come with them enough to make a difference in Greater Manchester? And how damaging has the 10 days or so of delay been? Well, listen, Carl, thank you very much. And um, uh, clearly, 
uh, we wanted uh, uh, a deal. That, as I said, that was the, the best way uh, forward. We've had to take action just because of the urgency of the, of the situation. Uh, I've described the, uh, some of the funds that are already on the table. Other discussions undoubtedly will uh, continue. But just, just, so you, so just for, for, your, uh, for, for, your, for your viewers, uh, Carl, for our viewers, um, we've already, for in, in Greater Manchester, provided £196 million pounds of additional COVID funding to local authorities in Greater Manchester, uh, £663 million pounds to the Greater Manchester Local Enterprise uh, Partnership through the Local uh, Growth Fund uh, to help them, uh, and uh, £81 million pounds of, of shovel-ready projects uh, to support uh, business uh, and, and growth in, in Manchester. Uh, we don't want to uh, do this uh, in the way that uh, we've had to. Obviously, we're going to keep uh, talking to Andy Burnham and, and, and his teams, but you know, I'm grateful to them. I'm grateful to, uh, to the leadership of, of the councils in, in Manchester now for, for getting behind the measures that we're putting in place, because that's our best chance of, of getting the virus down. So, um, to your question, Carl, about Tier 3 measures, the nationally published Tier 3 measures are the minimum national standard for hard measures, but there are other things that local authorities can consider on top, and I hope some do. What is really important is compliance. Um, you know, everybody needs to accept that this is not a good place to be if you're in Tier 3, but to get behind it, and try and get the rate of disease falling so that R in that area is falling so that the pressure comes off the health service, particularly in those 60 plus age groups. And to your point about um, what's 10 days delay look like, well, I've got some data in front of me um, and I'll just pick out um, th three local areas and I'll first of all give you the um, case rate per 100,000 in the age 60 plus between the 1st and the 7th of October. And then I'll fast forward to the 8th to the 14th of October. So that's not quite your 10 days, uh, but I hope it'll give you some idea. So Manchester, um, initial figure 302 per 100,000 later figure 326 Salford 164 later figure 287 Wigan 207 later figure 399 so I hope that gives you some kind of understanding of what we talk about when we talk about you know the doubling time and when we talk about the um, rapid rate of progress of health service amenable problems in the elderly um, once this disease gets out of control in an area and I hope that gives you some flavor of what that kind of time period produces at the moment Thank thanks you. very much JVT Stephen and you want, you want to add well, that? I think it's worth um, saying that as JVT has said in terms of doubling rates of infection that also plays directly into the effects on hospital admissions and hospital uh, and patients in hospital. So, uh, so we have made this point many times and you alluded to it, uh, that any measures that are introduced now, if people comply with them, it will be up to two weeks before we see that having an effect on the NHS because there is an incubation period for the virus of about five days, then there's five to seven days of symptoms before typically people present and, and have to be admitted to hospital for the, for the, for the, purport, the small proportion that do. So, so to give you an example in Greater Manchester, which, which um, uh, illustrates that. So, so my colleagues in the NHS in Greater Manchester are doing a great job at the moment. Uh, they are managing, they are working together as a, as a healthcare system to ensure they can manage the rising number of patients with COVID, but also keep services going for everybody who hasn't got COVID and it's really important that people continue to access those services. But two weeks ago, there were just over 330 patients in hospitals in Greater Manchester. Two weeks further on, i.e. Uh, uh, yesterday, there were just over 620, so that's a doubling. Uh, another two weeks, if that doubles again, uh, then we're uh, into 1,200 or so. 
Now, at the very peak in Manchester, in Greater Manchester, uh, on the 18th of April, there were 1,277 patients in their hospitals. So, in two weeks' time, uh, we could well be seeing, at the current rate of rise, the sorts of numbers of patients in hospitals in Greater Manchester that we saw at the peak in April. And that's why it's really important that measures are taken uh, at the right time, and it's really important why everybody complies with them uh, to get infection rates down. Thanks, Steve, and, and thanks, Carl. Let's go to Tom Newton Dunn of Times Radio. Good afternoon, Prime Minister. Thank you very much. Wales and Northern Ireland both have lower infection rates than England, sometimes considerably lower, yet both have voluntarily put themselves into regional lockdowns, pretty much everything closed apart from schools. Why have you decided to take a different course? Why are you not looking at regional or local lockdowns at the moment? And a question to John Van Tam and Stephen Powers, please. John Van Tam, you just eloquently explained why national lockdowns, national circuit breakers uh, may not be such a clever idea with varying infection rates, but can you confirm you are actively looking at local circuit breakers for these hotspot areas? And how long are you going to give tier three to work to reduce the R rate in Manchester, Liverpool, etc., before you then advise the Prime Minister to move on to local circuit breakers? Well, Tom, thank you, thank you very much. First of all, obviously, uh, in the areas which uh, are experiencing a particular surge of the virus uh, that, that are now in tier three or going into to tier three, you know, we rule nothing out. If we have to take uh, tougher measures, then of course uh, we will. Uh, we think that, that that local regional approach is is right. But uh, I just want to go back to the points that both Steve and JVT have been making, that the way to make this work with, with Tier 3 is for everybody to comply. And it, I think the, the package uh, of measures that we have uh, in Tier 3 in these hotspot areas, uh, if they are implemented, if they are implemented, uh, will do the trick in those areas. And that can make a huge difference uh, to the overall spread of the, of, of the virus in the, in the country. So, um, thank you for the question. Uh, my retort is rather simple, really, that um, you know we just can't afford just to let our elderly die. And we can't afford to allow our NHS to be completely consumed by looking after COVID so it can't do its other business as usual work. So we'll have to take as tough measures are necessary to stop that. And the typical um, lead time, the lag time, between doing something and beginning to see a discernible effect in terms of first case rates and then maybe delayed by another week, hospital admissions, is two to three weeks. And just to make a point that, again, that the Prime Minister made, you know, we're running now with the brakes partially on and the R is 1.3 to 1.5, according to the latest SPI-M um, estimates. So, you know, we can't take the brake off on this, and we may have to push on the pedal a little harder to get it back under control. Thanks very much, JVT. Thank you, Tom. Uh, Jason Groves of the, of the Daily Mail. Thanks, Prime Minister. Um, first of all, can you clear up once and for all whether Manchester is going to get this £60 million pounds that uh, you offered uh, it, earlier in the day. And more broadly, you seem to be facing a kind of northern revolt. This isn't just Andy Burnham. Your own ally, uh, Graham Brady, says there's no evidence these measures will work and lots of evidence they'll wreck jobs. Uh, the leader of Middlesbrough Council says using bad data. The leader of Hartlepool Council says the government can sod off if it wants to uh, impose more restrictions. Why can't you convince northern leaders of all stripes that you're doing the right thing? And does it matter if you can't? Can, you, can the country go forward together if you can't? And Professor Van Tam, can I ask you very quickly, today's death toll uh, uh, is shockingly high, 241 people. I, is that a blip or you talked about things being baked in. Is that what we're going to uh, be seeing regularly over the next few weeks? Uh, well, Jason, first of all, um, let me just say in, in respect of, of funding of, 
uh, of Greater Manchester. Uh, obviously, uh, we want to, uh, to do more. We want to, to uh, as, as we said uh, earlier on today, but for the sake of fairness, uh, it has to be, the deal has to be in line with the agreements we've, we've reached with, uh, with Lancashire and, and Merseyside, for instance, where, uh, where we have made uh, progress. And I just, just remind you uh, that in terms of, of business support, uh, 46,700 business premises in Greater Manchester have received uh, local authority grant payments of £546 million, uh, 96,100 people in uh, Greater Manchester have uh, received uh, support under the self-employed uh, income uh, support scheme. And the, and the coronavirus, the furlough scheme, uh, has looked after uh, 407,900 jobs uh, so far in, in Manchester. I think, that's, I, I, I think it's just worth repeating because all that's already uh, gone in, but we're now offering more. But as I say, we, we had to act. Uh, today, uh, because of the uh, the surge in in cases that you you know you've just rightly alluded to, uh, in order to protect health and uh, and save lives. Yeah, so thank you, Jason. Yes, 241 uh, new deaths today. That's up 161 compared with yesterday. But on a Monday or a Tuesday, we always get something of a catch up due to. Um, the, a delay in reporting deaths over the weekend. So part of that surge in deaths is related to the weekly pattern of slightly lower figures at the weekend and then a kind of catch up early in the week. But overall, is the trend upwards? Yes. Do I expect the uh, trend in deaths to continue upwards? Yes, unfortunately I do. Thanks very much, JBT. Let's go to Dominic Yateman of Metro. Hello, Prime Minister. Um, you said what we couldn't do is a deal with Greater Manchester that's out of kilter with deals struck with uh, Merseyside and Lancashire. Um, uh, but uh, given that the £22 million on offer is, is exactly half that offered to Liverpool, should local authorities be penalised if they do not agree uh, with the settlements offered? And one to Professor Van Tan, if I may. Um, is the argument for a short national circuit break now stronger or weaker than when SAGE recommended it on September the 21st? Uh, well, listen, uh, thank you very much, Dominic. And first of all, uh, the, the 22 uh, million that you, that you mentioned, that's, that's separate and, and additional to any other uh, support that uh, we were trying to uh, agree with, uh, with, with Manchester for, for, for business. Uh, support. Uh, I've mentioned the figures that we've already, that the support that's already gone in uh, to support uh, business in, uh, in in Manchester. We're, we're, our, our door is open to uh, to, to continue that, that particular conversation. But uh, for the sake of fairness, we have to keep it in line, as I said, with uh, what we agreed with um, uh, with, uh, with with Lancashire, uh, Merseyside, uh, and so forth. Yeah. Could you remind me of the question, please? Uh, yes. Uh, is the argument for a short national circuit oh, yes. break lockdown yes. now stronger or weaker yes. than when yes. SAGE recommended it on September the 21st? Thank you. So I've already articulated the reasons why I think a national lockdown at the moment would be inappropriate for communities in Cornwall and East Anglia, for example. But it is a kind of scientific feature of the effect of a lockdown that if disease levels are higher when you affect the lockdown the effect will be less overall than if the lockdown is inflicted at a point when disease levels are much lower so i suppose what i'm saying is is that i wouldn't expect the same magnitude of effect if one were done now as if it were done um, early in September or mid-September, but I repeat the point that the epidemiology is so varied across England that I think it would be very difficult um, to justify for some communities. Um, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, JBT. The last question is to uh, Jen Williams of the Manchester Evening News. 
Thank you. Um, Prime Minister, Greater Manchester has been under constantly changing lockdown measures since the start of August, sometimes announced with just a few hours' notice, sometimes emerging late at night on social media. At one point, Bolton was under four different sets of restrictions in the space of a few days. Have you visited the region at any point to speak to people about what this has been like for them? Do you think you're open with an apology? And do you think there's any connection between that approach and our current high infection rate? And secondly, you still haven't said exactly how much business support Greater Manchester is getting. Given that you're saying that it needs to be aligned with Liverpool and Lancashire, does that mean it will be no more than £60 million? And to a Deputy Chief Medical Officer, do you think that a more localised approach to contact tracing before now would have helped to keep some of these current infection rates down? Well, uh, Jen, let me just say, um, you know, to all those businesses, uh, you, you asked for me to ap apologise, and I, I am deeply sorry that it is necessary to put these uh, these measures in place, and to everybody who's endured uh, the privations and the difficulties of uh, of this period, of course, I'm I'm deeply deeply sorry for for what's been necessary, uh, Jen. Uh, but you know, nobody wants to in enact measures like this. I, I do think that uh, there has been uh, some uh, simplification thanks to the tiering uh, system. Uh, that's a, that's a good thing, uh, and uh, of course we we want to. Uh, give Manchester, give uh, businesses, people in Greater Manchester the proper uh, levels of support. As I've said, uh, our, our door remains open uh, to, uh, to to Andy to, to discuss that. Um, uh, though we've got to we've got to keep it in line, obviously, with with with, with deals already done. And I just want to repeat my my gratitude to uh, the people of, of Greater Manchester for uh, their uh, willingness to help everybody in the country uh, to follow the guidance, follow the rules and get this virus done. I mean, that it, it, it's in all of our hands. So on the question about um, contact tracing, um, I believe a blended approach of national contact tracing to kind of deal with the high volume, low, uh, low complexity um, contact tracing is a good thing. But I think the local backup to deal with complex and difficult and hard to reach um, cases is a really good idea. I think you need both to be truthful. Dead right. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I know how difficult it is at the moment uh, in the in the northwest and, and of course from the NHS I'm particularly grateful to all the NHS staff in the northwest who I know are dealing day by day with increasing number of patients uh, with COVID and at the same time are ensuring uh, that all other patients, uh, cancer patients, patients with heart attacks, with strokes, a whole range of, of things uh, are also being looked after and managed appropriately. But, but as I've said, uh, the key to keeping doing that is to get infection rates under control. I expect that Liverpool University hospitals will have as many patients, well, more patients by tomorrow with COVID in, in their hospitals than they had at the peak in April. And I think that shows just how fast we can see infection uh, rates and hospital admissions rise if we don't get this under control. So it's really critical, uh, and as the Prime Minister has said, we're all grateful for everybody uh, to comply with these measures, uh, to uh, maintain social distancing and to ensure, quite simply, that the virus doesn't have a ch chance to spread. Thank you very much, Steve. Thank you, thank you, JBT, and, and thank you, everybody, uh, for watching. I, look, I just want to repeat the, the central point that we're, we're walking a narrow path uh, here today because we, we don't want to go back into a, uh, a national lockdown with all the, the, the damage, social and economic, uh, that that can do, uh, unless we absolutely have to. Uh, we think that the local uh, approach is the, the reasonable one, given the, the way the virus is, is dispersed. And uh, that's what uh, we're going to, to do. And just to sort of give everybody uh, some, uh, some hope, uh, if, you, if you look at what is actually happening with the universities, for instance, they have done a great job, I think, in getting their virus uh, under control. Uh, you, you saw some, how some of those lines are, are starting to come down. And I repeat the point uh, that, that we made earlier, both JBT and I, that this, the, the R is currently above one, but it's not that much uh, above one. And so if we all follow the uh, guidance together and everybody uh, gets together and complies with the, uh, the, tiers that we, the, the rules for the tiers that, uh, uh, that have been set out and that are on the, on the website, then I've no doubt that we can uh, drive it down, particularly in those badly affected areas. Thanks very much, everybody.